A very good Thursday to everybody and thanks for clicking on to today's European Outlook. We're going to look at that weekly look at the latest state of the polar vortex, the uh, current situation regarding Northern Hemisphere snow cover and cold and uh, you know all points in between as well. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so as I've already been harping on about for some time. I'm edging closer to 7,000 subscribers for the first time in the channel's history so help me get there by hitting that subscribe button let's start off by looking at the temperature anomalies globally through the first 22 days of the month and uh, a couple of interesting standouts the amount of warmth up in the arctic region is very apparent here and also across much of north america greenland uh, down into australia and south america as well we've got a, a fair amount of warmth to be had. That being said, much of Africa and the central region of Eurasia is pretty darn cold, it has to be said, with the focus of coldest conditions globally at the moment across say, Kazakhstan, Mongolia and southern portions of Russia. We're also seeing colder air now filter into China as, a, as the Arctic air continues to press southwards here. So this is the current situation uh, across Europe, and you can see here that we've got a warm UK and Ireland, uh, or around about average actually for Ireland. Um, the heart of Central and Southeastern Europe is uh, colder than average, northern portions of the continent as well as the Southwest, warmer than average. This is the upcoming seven day period, and that warm, um, that warm trend continues across the Arctic region, Exceptionally warm conditions actually across the majority of North America, it has to be said. Across northern portions of Asia, Eurasia, we're seeing warmer than average conditions here. And we're removing that warmer than average, um, uh, well, essentially we're removing that warmer than average across the UK and Ireland. But also equally, uh, Central Asia, for example, is uh, has, well, this is how it's looking so far. You can see here, let's actually zoom into Asia specifically. So this is so far through the month. This is the upcoming seven days and quite the contrast, quite the turnaround coming up for particularly Kazakhstan. Look at the cold now moving um, into eastern portions of, of China, Southeast Asia, for example. So that colder is drilling southeastwards. But as a consequence, we're warming things up over the northern half of the continent in terms of snow well we are still above average across southern portions of russia into mongolia but we're um, you know somewhat below average across the western portions of uh, siberia a little bit above average across northern scandinavia and then we're below average pretty much across the board with uh, north america with anomalously warm temperatures uh, you know keeping the snow uh, levels down so with high pressure over much of russia we're not really seeing a great deal of snow uh, expansion over northern portions of uh, asia um through the course of the upcoming week now the mjo for the first time in many weeks it has to be said is uh, becoming quite amplified over the indian ocean it's a tweet here uh, from yesterday uh, initiation of a new MJO wave over the Indian Ocean as seen from Meteosat data. So you can see here the uh, clouds uh, over the central Indian Ocean indicative of that um, enhanced pulse of MJO that is going to be rapidly accelerating through the uh, in the maritime continent here and as a consequence of that we've seen, um, we've seen the Pacific jet become very strong indeed exit in Asia we're seeing positive mountain torque um, more than that in just a wee second here but you can see a rapid acceleration through phases one two three into four it's very strong in phase four at the moment which is the western side of the maritime continent eastern side of a uh, of a uh, of of the Indian Ocean it's expected to continue if we look at the GFS projection for the Manjulian oscillation it is expected to move into the western portion of the Pacific, and that could be important for high latitude blocking. You've got the combination of uh, La Nina, East QBO, 
tends to weaken the polar vortex. And if it gets into the phases of 6 and 7, if we look at the pole around the correlation here, this is phase 3. Granted, it's uh, perhaps a little bit hard to see. Let's zoom in just a wee fraction if I can. So this is phase 3. This is where we've went from. And you can see here uh, positive heights through the subtropical Atlantic, negative heights over the higher latitudes of the Atlantic. That is for the end of October, so essentially the 28th of October in a phase 3 scenario. Now, if we go to a phase uh, 4, like we're in at the minute, you can see here that we've got uh, generally high pressure just to the west, lower pressure to the east. Essentially, that is what we're at at the moment with regards to these areas of low pressure moving across the Atlantic into the UK and Ireland, moving eastwards with high pressure building in. We're going to see that northerly flow. So a phase 4, uh, end of October, quite nicely correlated with the reality. Now, if we move into phases 6, which is the um, east end of Indonesia into the western portion of the Pacific, we have this look to it. We've got positive heights up over the over Greenland, over the North Atlantic. We've got a, a, a significant negative here over the north side of the Aleutians. And with the low to the east, uh, high to the, the west, we've got a northerly airflow. And if you look at the upcoming seven days, according to the modelling here, we have got a colder than average UK and Ireland here. The question mark is what happens through this transition um, across Indonesia with the Manjulian Oscillation. What influence is that going to have? Now, as I said, the increased mountain torque, uh, Manjulian Oscillation uh, moving quite quickly through the Indian Ocean, what effect is that having on the stratosphere? If we look at the latest of the, uh, the GFS Ensemble, this is the temperatures at 10 millibars, so the upper levels of the stratosphere. This is the 10 meter temperature and anomaly. And I want to draw your attention to this ongoing warming that we're seeing here, uh, rotating uh, around uh, in a kind of clockwise fashion here or anti clockwise fashion. You can see this rotation of warming. Look at this burst of warming across the top of North America. Then we've got cooling showing up here. And as we play through, again, another surge of warming here taking place. That may be induced by that MJO phase 3 and 4, by the way, uh, propagating from troposphere up into the stratosphere. But then towards the end of this period, you notice that we're starting to see the cold reform over the pole with, yeah, still got uh, warmth surrounding it. Um, but we've got this kind of re-congregation of colder temperatures and uh, and pressure over top of the Arctic region. And if you look at the latest of the ECMWF in terms of the 10 meter uh, mean zonal winds, obviously the stronger the mean zonal winds, the stronger the PV, uh, opposite of that when they're weak. You can see here that we are now above the you know record weak. Uh, we remain firmly below average. It is expected to go into near average territory. So these mean zonal winds surrounding the polar vortex are expected to tighten up, strengthen, and uh, that possibly is correlating with what we're seeing in terms of the GFS extended. This is out the Monday the 17th of November, granted. But if we look at the mean zonal winds, it stays close to, if you look at the ensemble mean um, which is the, the thick um, blue line, it's it's matching quite closely with the thick red line, which is the climatological average. So the polar vortex essentially is expected to strengthen uh, over the next couple of weeks or so. But in contrast to that, it's quite interesting when you look at the, the longer term modeling. This is, by the way, of the GFS extended um upcoming 30 days and we've got this kind of west based negative north atlantic oscillation here uh, we've got the positives over hudson bay uh, baffin straits greenland we've got this firm negative here incorporating europe including the uk and ireland by the way the, the uk and ireland being on the western side of the trough we've also got a trough over eastern portions of north america as well 
let's have another view of that by looking at the flat earth uh, scope. You can see here quite nicely how this is looking. In terms of the, uh, this is the upper heights. Uh, let's have a look at the surface pressure for the same 30 day period. And you can see here that we've got the negatives here uh, across well, the vast majority of uh, Europe, it has to be said. A deep negative uh, over the Gulf of Alaska, up into uh, Alaska uh, generally, and then across the top of North America, we've got some positives over uh, the western side of North America, uh, indicative of higher pressure. But look at how strong that positive is over Greenland and the ridge um, with troughs either side of that. If we put on the temperature anomaly, you can see here that uh, we are showing below average. Now, the vast majority of the planet, by the way, is looking warm than average, with exceptions of central and southern India, uh, East Asia, um, and the UK and Ireland, you know, also slightly below average across eastern North America uh, and parts of eastern Asia. So uh, anywhere from southeast Asia uh, up into eastern China, the Koreas and Japan, below average according to the GFS. Uh, extended. Look at the looking at the ECMWF over the next thirty days. So this is a out to Friday the twenty first of November. Likewise for the GFS, you've got this trough, uh, both sides of that ridge in between. So you've got a trough over Europe, a trough over eastern uh, portions of North America. Ridge centered again, west based negative NAO centered over uh, the Baffin uh, Island region here, Baffin Straits in the Greenland here. If we look at the flat earth view of this, again, very similar to the GFS ensemble. If we put on the, uh, the surface pressure, again, it's indicating a, a strong positive over Greenland and Iceland, strong negative over much of Europe here. That's quite interesting. Let's put on the temperatures and see what it's indicating for that 30-day period. And again, uh, like the GFS, that is for Canada, not um, the UK. Yeah, marginally uh, below average, it has to be said. Let's have a quick look then at the week-by-week -week view because this is obviously a 30-day average. This is the upcoming seven days according to the ECM Extended. Play through the loop. You can see here that the cold then gets replaced by something warmer. This is a end of October first week of November and then just continue to play it through here and it's indicating a not particularly cold look this is all the way out to the 7th of December of course but they yeah obviously a very very long way off let's have a look at the, the GFS extended in terms of the seven day increments then see what it's indicating compared to the, the, the ECMWF it too, yeah, showing a little bit colder, but it too is, is showing similar. In terms of the Arctic Oscillation, it is negative at the moment, going positive and then going negative as we step towards the final week or so of October. Looking at the, uh, the North Atlantic Oscillation, you can see here it's uh, largely negative into the early portions of November, you can see here it's uh, expected to remain fairly neutral. Uh, the mean is the green and then uh, the control run going a little bit crazy, it has to be said, with positive. So, in terms of snow over the next few days, not a huge amount to speak about. Some over the Alps, we're getting more over parts of uh, Norway, for example. A little bit over the Scottish Highlands. Perhaps a little smidgen on that northerly flow with the low over the North Sea for exposed areas of North Wales. Uh, the Pennines, for example, may get a dusting if you're lucky. Uh, any you know, relatively decent snow will be over the tops of the Scottish Highlands, for example. So, uh, yep, it is turning colder, it has to be said, over the coming days. But it looks as if this is nothing other than a, a typical October cold spell. That is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, and I'll be back again, as always, tomorrow with more. Bye for now.